Hey guys, what's up? It's Mac, and today I am going to be doing a and a I asked um, people on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube what you want to know about me, whether that be just random related or LGBT related. I don't know. I don't know what you guys want to know, except I do know because you asked me, so we're going to answer those questions right now, okay? Ah! This might be too personal, but what is your favorite plant? Sorry if it's just too personal. How dare you? But I'll tell you anyway. This is my favorite plant. Her name is Margarita, and she is our house family pet. Uh, she is a colorful aglonemus. Colorful aglonemus is what Margarita is. What's your favorite thing about being transgender? That's really interesting because when you think about being trans, most of it is associated in a negative way because obviously you, you feel like you're born in the wrong body. You hate that people call you the wrong pronouns and see you the way that you don't want to be seen. They, you, you look and you feel just horrible ways. And so my favorite thing about being trans, I guess, is that for me, being trans is one of the most unique and profound things about me. It's definitely a conversation topic. So if I don't really have anything to talk about and people are interested in the subject, you know, I've had friends that just like ask me all these kinds of questions all the time. And some trans people don't like answering lots and lots of questions, but I love it. I love people trying to educate themselves more and just know more about me and taking an interest in my life and being so accepting and understanding. And it's great. So I just, I really love the opportunity to educate people on a community that has been just so discriminated and looked down upon for forever. Favorite food to eat? Biscuits and sausage gravy. What's your favorite feature before transition and after transition? Has it stayed the same? I'm assuming you mean physical feature. Um, my favorite physical feature of myself and that I get the most compliments on, not that I get a lot of compliments or anything, but what uh, people tend to comment on is my teeth. Um, Gosh, I hope I have nothing in my teeth right now. Do I? I don't think so. But uh, people always like comment on my smile, like, hey, hey, yo, what's up? Do you want to grow a beard or rather keep it shaved? Uh, definitely shaved. I'm too much of a twink for that. Swimsuits. How? So before I had top surgery, um, I had only gone swimming a couple times and they were either in a private pool in a friend's backyard or at a hotel in a city that wasn't mine. I just wore like my binder and like a tank top or a t-shirt over top. So just swim trunks, binder, t-shirt. And that's what I did. And there's a lot of, you'd be surprised by a lot of cis guys that go to the beach or something and they don't want to take off their shirt because they like don't feel comfortable in their bodies. Like, you know, and so they wear a t-shirt into the ocean or into the pool. And it's like, people don't really look at you that weird. So don't overthink it. How to come out to transphobic parents? Well, let me tell you the first thing. If you're like maybe under 18 and you're like living with your parents and they're maybe transphobic, I would think long and hard about how they're going to react if you tell them you're trans or LGBTQIA plus of any kind. I would consider one, are they going to physically harm you? Because if that's the case, don't come out to them. Um, two, are they going to kick you out on the streets? Are they going to say, you can't live with us anymore. You don't have a home. Get out of my house. Because if they're going to say that, don't come out. Um, you can maybe come out to your friends at school or your friends that you make online. Like online is where I found all my first LGBT friends. Um, that's where I really recommend starting. I would not come out to your parents though, if they're going to harm you or kick you out. Um, if they're that transphobic. Um, if you don't think that they'll kick you out, maybe they're just like, they're transphobic, but you know that they will always love you, they're not gonna physically harm you, they're not gonna kick you out, then I would say maybe start like dropping hints, like, oh, I have like this trans friend, like what do you think about trans people? Just like bring up trans topics. Oh, you know, I saw this article about this trans thing, like what do you think about that? 
and they might be like, oh, that's horrible, like trans, you're demented if you're trans. Then you can kind of like educate them a little bit without having to say you're trans. Well, here's what I think. Like, I think that we should use the correct pronouns because of this and that, and just try to educate your parents because education is like the strongest tool that you're going to have in trying to convert your parents from transphobic to accepting. Ugh, how do you feel about getting older? Are you looking forward to it or dreading it? Ooh, this is a tough one because I mean, you can look at it multiple ways. I am 23. I'm in the prime of my young adulthood right now. So, you know, as I get older, I'm gonna get wrinkly and death is more inevitable. So I'm not looking forward to that. I am looking forward as I'm on testosterone, you know, another year or two, I'm gonna look more my age. Right now I look like I'm 17 years old. If not less, I'm kind of giving myself more credit here. I look 17 years old. But um, in like a year or two, you know, maybe I'll, I'll look more my age. So I'm looking forward to looking my age, um, but I'm not looking forward to getting older. I mean, I love life. I wanna continue life, but I just wish I could stay my age forever. By 2021, you know, I think we'll have discovered the secret for the fountain of youth. We'll have some little potions and shit. So I think we'll be good to go from there. I'm not too worried. What was the hardest part about your whole transition? Well, the hardest part about my whole transition was the two years when I was baffling. Do I come out? Do I not come out? Do I come out? Do I not come out? And it was maybe more like a year and a half because for about six months I was just questioning my gender. I didn't even know what trans meant. I didn't know, like, is this me? Because I kind of feel this way, but ugh, I'm in denial. That can't be me. But then I knew for about a year and a half, this is me. I could either come out and have my family and friends disown me, have my work fire me. I could go through all of that and, you know, live as my true self. Or I could stay closeted and be miserable, be horribly, horribly, horribly depressed and among other things and but you know, have my friends and family, have my job, maybe that'd be good. So it was kind of that year and a half of baffling, do I come out, do I not come out? That was pure agony. And so once I decided to come out, everything was like a snowball effect. From there, everything just like fell into place as soon as I decided I'm coming out, I'm transitioning. What was the part of transitioning that you were most excited for when you first realized you were trans? Mine was deciding on my name. When I first realized I was trans, I had the most dysphoria, which isn't 100% common. Most people have like dysphoria about their voice or their chest. I had dysphoria about everything, but the thing that drove me the most insane, the thing that I noticed most when I looked in the mirror was my hair. I had long hair and you don't have to be male to have short hair. You know, you can be a woman and have short hair, but I had just never cut my hair short. I had always wanted it short and I felt like my long hair made me look so feminine. My face already looked very feminine. It didn't help me pass and the long hair wasn't helping me pass at all. I would hate it. I would like literally like be tugging at it, wanting to rip it out. I would be crying. I would look at pictures of myself and hate it. And I was just so afraid to cut my hair because that's the thing that people would start asking questions about. Like, oh my God, Mac, are you a lesbian? Mac, what's, what's going on? So the day when I cut my hair short for the first time in August, 2015 was the most liberating day almost in my life besides the day that I decided to come out and transition. It was, I had just more euphoria even than the day I started testosterone, more euphoria than the day I had top surgery because it was just the first thing that had ever happened to start my physical transition. And again, you can get your hair cut short as a girl. You can have short hair, long hair as a girl, as a non-binary person, as a man. Like it doesn't matter, but it was just, it was just the start of everything for me. And I just felt so, so comfortable looking at myself in the mirror when I had short hair. It was incredible. What is your opinion on overalls? Well, let me tell you, I love overalls. And it's like kind of the thing now, like people just have overalls. And so I've been like online, I've been to multiple stores, I've tried on overalls. And the problem is, um, if I want overalls that fit my hips, I have to get like really baggy overalls because I have really big hips. I wear like a size 34 pants. I'm five foot nine. And so finding pants in general and shorts is really difficult. But overalls for some reason are just like cut really weird. And so if I want ones that fit my hips, 
I have to get like really baggy overalls, so I'm not about that life. And if I want pants that, you know, fit me tight, the hips are like this small. So I've just had the hardest time finding overalls. So if anyone has any good overall brand suggestions, hit a brother up. Hi Mac, I'm terrified of surgery, but dysphoria sucks. Any tips how to relieve surgery anxiety when the time comes? It's really interesting because obviously surgery is horrifying. Someone is literally cutting you open with a scalpel and taking things out or putting things in. Like, yeah. surgery can be terrifying. For me though, while blood and guts and gore have never been my thing, I honestly, on, like honestly, I didn't really have any surgery anxiety at all whatsoever because top surgery was just something that I needed. Something I'll tell you for anyone that is considering or getting top surgery, top surgery, like if you're having a double mastectomy or a periareola or a keyhole, I have heard across many of my friends and myself included that it is a very simple and it's a very painless surgery and recovery process. When, after I had top surgery, like, you know, the week that I had to have the binder on and the drains in, the drains didn't bother me at all. I didn't have any pain. Recovering, I, I mean, I had limited mobility, but I, it was very painless. And you have to think about the end goal. I want my chest to look like this in the future. I want it to be flat. For me, having a flat chest justified going through surgery. So, good luck. So there were so many more questions, but those are the ones that I'm going to get to today. I, if you guys like uh, seeing Q&As, like if you want me to do more of these, let me know in the comments. Um, yeah. Yeah. So if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and comment down below. Share this video to my channel with your friends, and if you haven't followed me on social media, what are you doing? The links are in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.